today we are going over another player review as we look into how Sadiq Bey proved this season that he was going to be a key part of the Pistons' young core moving forward. Locked on Pistons, coming up next. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Per usual, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, or if you're one of the 50% of people who are watching this on YouTube and haven't hit that subscribe button, make sure you guys go to the Locked On Pistons YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We are on a road to 3,000 subscribers, continuing to show Locked On with the best and fastest growing fan base at the Lockdown Network. So, again, I'd really appreciate it. It's the best way to support the podcast. Real quick, funny tidbit real quick. We've been doing this YouTube channel for about like six, seven months now. My mother just told me last night that she just now found out that I was on YouTube. She'd only been wa- or listening to the podcast and did not know that I was on YouTube somehow, listening to the podcast. That must mean she's not really listening, you feel me? Because at the beginning, we say go to YouTube, hit that subscribe button. But anyways, I'm just messing with her. I had to give my mom a shout-out for that. All right, so in this podcast... I want to tell the story of Sadiq Bay's season. I know I said on a previous episode, a previous uh, player review over Cade, uh, that we want to talk about, you know, the, the outline basically was strengths, then weaknesses, favorite moments, and ways to improve next season. But I feel like Sadiq Bay, I, I want to get a little bit different with Sadiq Bay. I'm going to try my best to do it. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not some book writer. I'm not a storyteller. But I want to tell the story of Sadiq Bay's season and why Sadiq Bay's progression and his entire second season was one of my favorite de- developments of the Detroit Pistons season. So if you were listening to the podcast, following along with the podcast, or following me on Twitter, or following me at all, over the past year or so before uh, this second season for Sadiq Bey, if you followed me during his rookie season and in the offseason, you will know that people penned me as the Sadiq Bey hater because I was questioning whether just how high his ceiling was. I acknowledged that he was a really nice player and a really nice piece, I thought he would just be a nice 3 and D type of player. I didn't think he had much more to his game. So throughout the entire offseason, including Summer League, when when he went out there and tried to play more of an isolation game and tried to do more with the ball in his hands, it wasn't looking good. I was on here almost every day on the podcast, constantly with guest after guest saying, listen, Sadiq Bey needs to just go back to playing 3 and D. He needs to be worried about playing just, you know, shooting threes and playing good defense and perfecting that craft. And he can be a really good player doing it. I still don't think, 3 and D players are bad or anything. I don't like how people just disrespected 3 and D players. But that's where I was with Sadiq Bey. I questioned his decision-making. I dis- I questioned his processing speed. And I questioned his ability to play – What, what was, what's, the, what's the right word? To read the defense quick enough to play team basketball, basically, and make the right read. And I guess that all falls under processing, too. Uh, I don't know if you'd throw that underneath basketball IQ or anything, but that's where we were at just coming into this season. And Sadiq Bey, to start the season, as they were promising us all offseason, he got to do a lot more with the ball in his hands to start the season off. And it's fair to say that it didn't go well at all. It was going poorly. It was going horrifically. It was terrible. It was, it was, it was really bad. Just put it frank. Looking back on it, it was really, really bad. Through the first 26 games of his second season, Sadiq Bey was scoring 11 points a game on 34% from the field and 29% from deep, 73% from the free throw line. That That's horrific. It was bad. It was really, really bad. And this is coming from a guy who just the previous season shot 40% from the field, 38% from deep on six attempts, and shot 84% from the free throw line. So it definitely was catching people off guard and it had people questioning, what's going on with Sadiq? Is, is he taking a, a, a massive step back? Well, what's going on? And a lot of this for me, and we talked about this throughout the season, but for me, I said, listen, he doesn't need to be doing as much with the ball in his hands. He's making life harder on himself. He's not playing the way he should be playing. He needs to just go back to being a 3 and D player. He needs to stop trying to run pick and rolls, run isos, you know, really attack people off the dribble, try and go to the rim. I was basically saying the dude needs to stop doing all this extra stuff that he added into his game and just go right back to just shooting threes and playing defense like I had been saying all offseason. Because – those those numbers through 26 games were horrific. It was it was it was honestly scary. If you want to be honest, as a Pistons fan, Pistons fans across the community, they were terrified. We people were freaking out 
26 games is a decent chunk of the season. That's over a quarter of the season. That that's 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 worrisome. I, I remember at the beginning of the season that Dwayne Casey said, you know, we're not going to make any changes or worry about anything until at least 20 games into the season. Through 26 games, Sadiq Bay had been literally awful. And this is this guy was really good his rookie season. Had a lot of high hopes for the second season. So the fact that he was playing so so poorly through 26 games, it was worrisome to a lot of Pistons fans. There are a lot of people. I, I even saw memes on Twitter. Of people saying, oh, Luke Kennard shooting this percentage while Sadiq Bay shooting this. People were looking back at that trade like, oh, did we make a mistake? Like it was, it was, it was rough times. And Sadiq Bay was was going through it. He really was. And I believe even at one point, uh Dwayne Casey came out and said, There's nothing wrong if you know if Sadiq Bay were to play in the G League some. There's nothing wrong with that. We want to look at that as a development sign. Now, as much as they wanted to push uh the whole little G Leagues as a development. You know, we wanted to look at people to look at it as a demotion. It's just development. It's to get them extra reps. Everyone knows if you get thrown down to the G League, it's not. It's it's, it's not good. It's it, it means something's not going right. So the fact that they even mentioned that about Sadiq Bay in those first twenty game twenty six games, it just told you guys how 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 worrisome, or tells you guys how worrisome it was watching him play the first twenty six games. However, despite that, those twenty six games, and despite how bad Sadiq Bay looked through twenty six games. And how bad it had people worrying, and how it had me on the podcast coming on every day trying to take a victory lap. To be honest, on here trying to say, you know, I told you guys so. He needs to go back to shooting threes and only playing defense. Despite all that happening, not only were the people wrong who were questioning if Sadiq Bay needed to go take some reps in the G League, not only were the people wrong like me, not not only was I wrong and said he needed to simply just go back to shooting threes and only playing defense, not only was I wrong before the season with everything I was saying, everyone was wrong about Sadiq Bey through the first 26 games. I was wrong about Sadiq Bey coming into the season. And after those 26 games, Sadiq Bey went on to prove that he 100% is a key part of this future. He is the only pick from Toy Reaver's first draft as a Detroit Pistons GM. He is the only pick that has 100% secured himself as a legitimate core piece to this Pistons franchise. Not Isaiah Stewart, not Killian Hayes, not Saban Lee. Sadiq Bey, after those horrific 26 games, went on for the rest of the season to show that he will be a core piece of this Pistons franchise, and he proved everyone, including myself specifically, wrong. And we'll talk about that when we come back, just how he did that this season and showed just how much of a core piece he really is. But first, I have to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, Shady Rays. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that gives you the features of $200 sunglasses for a fraction of the price. That means polarized lenses, well-constructed durable frames, and premium high-end finishes. Also, something you won't find anywhere else is Shady Ray's insane in protection program. Shady Ray's includes lost and broken protection on every single pair. They will send you a brand new pair if you lose them, no matter what happened. Give them a try, and if you don't love them, you'll basically pay nothing. It's as simple as that. Plus, 10 meals are donated to Fight Hunger in America when you shop at Shady Rays. So that's always good as well when you're going out and making a purchase, doing something for those who are less fortunate in the world. Exclusively for our listeners, head to Shady, ShadyRays.com and use code Locked On to get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's code Locked On for their best deal of the season. 50% off two or more pairs of Shady Rays sunglasses backed by over 150,000 verified five-star reviews. Again, head to Shady Rays. Dot com and use code locked on. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you have not already, head to our YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to support the podcast. And I would really appreciate it. Sadiq Bey, he proved to be a core piece of the Pistons franchise in his second season. And again, he averaged 11 points, 34% shooting from the field, and 30% from deep over the first 26 games. However, it's what he did after that that really showed just how much of a piece and how how incredible of a development and, and flip he made in his second season. To summarize it all up by just looking at the numbers, and we'll dive into it even more and tell the story of it, over the next 56 games of the season, Sadiq Bey scored 18 points a game while shooting 41% from the field, 36% from deep on 8.1 attempts, and 85% from, from the free throw line. And make sure you pay attention to the free throw line remark or stat there because we're going to dive even more into that a little bit later. So just stay with me there. So much better numbers. Shot much better from the field. Scored a seven-point improvement over the first 26 games. Got back above 40% from the field. 
got back to where he was shooting from beyond the arc his rookie season, except on a much higher volume. What happened? How did Sadiq Bey flip this around? Well, I'll tell you how. Sadiq Bey, I feel like, I think what happened, Sadiq Bey looked himself in the mirror. Sadiq Bey realized, listen, I'm probably not this ISO guy. I'm not going to be this ISO guy. At least I'm not right now. I need to stop that. And no, he didn't just go to shooting just only threes and playing defense like I was entertaining. But he did start to, and something. this is something we said on the podcast throughout the season. It was from our friend Hal, who came on the podcast and mentioned it. We used this phrase throughout the whole season. He started to trim the fat off his games. This is what, or trim the fat off, off his game, not games, his game itself. And this is what I mean by that. Through the first 26 games of the season, so many times, and you want to be honest, I kind of put a little bit, just a little bit. I, I, I can't. I can't avoid not doing it. I kind of put a little bit of this on Dwayne Casey for not kind of having more of a structure within this and kind of eliminating this from the get-go. But maybe it was a trial and error type of thing. Who knows? Either way, it worked out. But overall, through the first 26 games of the season, Sadiq Bey, his isolations would consist of six, seven, eight dribbles of him just dribbling back and forth, crossover, too much stuff, way too much stuff to put himself into an awkward position. He just forced a shot up. He wasn't getting anywhere. He's not exactly the quickest guy. He's not the most athletic guy. He's not going to destroy guys off the first step. He's not going to explode past guys. He's not going to jump over guys. So having such prolonged isolations not only was hurting himself and making him take tougher shots, it was hurting the Detroit Pistons offense because everyone was just standing around waiting for Sadiq Bay to do something when he got the ball in his hands. And long drawn out ISOs are just not good for your offenses, a la the Brooklyn Nets, how they just got obliterated by the Boston Celtics. Drawn out ISOs that take forever to play out will not win consistently, especially when you're not that great at them. And that, that team had KD and Kyrie Irving. If you're Sadiq Bay, when you're taking that many dribbles and drawn out ISOs, it's not going to work out. Also, he was taking a lot of a long twos. He was trying to take a lot of jump shots off the dribble. He was taking a lot of fadeaways. He was taking just a lot, a lot of tough, inefficient shots. And if you looked at his shot chart from the first 26 games, and you looked at his shot chart over the last 56 games, this is the difference you would see. And it looked his shot diet, his shot map looks a lot more attractive over the last 56 games than it did the first 26 games. If you look at the first 26 games, you'll see a bunch of dots. You'll see a bunch of dots in the mid-range area. You'll see some dots behind the behind the three-point line. You'll see a little bit of dots around the uh, the rim, but you also will see a heck ton of dots around the 16 to to 19 feet area along the baseline, along you know right above the free throw line. You'll see a ton of those dots all over the place the first 26 games, and that right there is an inefficient player. Unless you're Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, Kobe Bryant, God rest his soul, all these guys who are capable of taking a lot of mid-rangers, of taking a lot of long twos, taking those type of shots and hitting them at a high clip, you're not going to be efficient. You're not going to play well because those are the worst shots in the game. That's what defenses want you to shoot. Drop coverage. You watch the Milwaukee Bucks. You watch any team that plays drop coverage. I, I say Milwaukee is the first one that pops off my head. But drop coverage is what a lot of teams play nowadays. And what that is funneling you into, it takes away, they try to take away from the pull-up three with a guy hugging you off the back. It's, it's I mean, Steph Curry can still get those threes off because he's Steph. But a lot of guys can't, and they funnel you into the big man. And a lot of guys aren't going to just go up through the big guy and over the big guy. So they're funneling you into a mid-range jump shot. And a lot of deep base jumpers were coming from that. This year, he had 147 possessions as a pick-and-roll ball handler. And a lot of his shots were simply coming off being funneled into the mid-range and taking a lot of tough contested twos, fadeaways, all those. So I feel like Sadiq Bey looked at himself and said, listen, we can't keep doing that. I got to trim this off my game. This is not helping me. Let me get back to what I'm great at. Let me work off of my three-point game. Let me create off of my gravity as a three-point shooter. And eventually that will help me add more to my game. And I put, and he can play more aggressive and create other things off of that instead of off of trying his handle or first step. And that absolutely worked for him. The prime example and, and the, the best stat that shows – how well this worked for him. And remember, I told you guys to remember his free throw percentage. It's his free throw attempts. Well, over the last 56 games of the season, he was averaging four free throws a game. Over the first 26 games, he was averaging around 1.6 free throws a game. You may be wondering, well, that doesn't make sense. How, how is that possible? He was he, he had the ball in his hands more in the first 26 games. He was trying to ISO do more in the first 26 games. You're saying that he trimmed a lot of that stuff out. In the last 56 games, but yet he still got more free throw attempts. How did that work? I'll tell you how. Because 
he was use he started to use his gravity as a three point shooter, which is absolutely there. He was starting to attack closeouts instead of taking long twos off his closeouts, instead of taking long twos off the isos that he did get, instead of taking long twos and fadeaways off the pick and rolls that he was getting. Instead of doing that, he realized, dude, I'm like LeBron James built. I, I have like a linebacker body. I'm going straight to the rim. I'm playing aggressive. Instead of bailing the defense out by taking these inefficient shots, I'm going straight to the rim. I'm going strong, and no one is going to be stronger than me. And if you do try to stop me, you will follow me. And that's what happened throughout the season. That right there was the key to Sadiq Bay switching his season around. And real quick, I want to give him props for this too. We'll get back to the free throw shooting. I just want to say this real quick. I have never seen a player in my life. I'm sure some of you older people may be able to figure out someone. But my life, I've never seen someone flip the switch like that midway through the season. Not a gradual flip the, flipping of the switch. Literally at game 26, after that, it was an immediate switch for Sadiq. And it just, everything changed after that. Immediate improvements. I've never seen a player do that before in my life. So I want to give him credit for that. Because that literally was shocking as hell to me. I literally had to wait two weeks on this podcast and say, well, you know, maybe it's just a trend. Maybe he's just in a hot streak. We got to wait. We got to wait. We got to wait. Because th- it's just not normal. It doesn't happen. But he did it. So give him credit for that. But again, what Sadiq Bey realized is that long twos and dribble and, and pull-up twos are tough. They're just tough to do. Even if you are a great player, you're not. It, it, those are tough shots to have to make. And what he realized is that, you know, I don't have to be just a 3 and D player. I don't have to just take threes. But Three-point shooting is the best part of my game. So everything needs to be built off of that. And that part is something that it, a lot of players take a long time to realize, and some players just simply don't ever realize it. Some players just want to keep for, banging their head against the wall and keep trying to do things that they simply can't do. So Deep Bay quickly realized, okay, first 26 game is not working. Three-point game, rock part of my game. I need to have everything come off of that. Everything needs to just build off of that. Hard closeouts? Oh, I'll take a dribble in, I'll attack a closeout, and I'm going all the way to the rim. I'm not taking one pull-up mid-range. Instead, I'm going to get all the way to the rim. Either I'm going to get a layup, the best shot in the game, or I'm going to get fouled. I'm going to shoot 85% from the free throw line, and I'm going to get more free throw attempts a game. Get the big guy in foul trouble, and guys next time will probably be too scared to close out on me, which means what? I'm getting another three off. I'm going to get more threes off. And you'll notice through the first 26 games, he only was shooting around 5.7 threes a game. Over the last 56 games, he's shooting around like eight threes a game. He, up, he upped his three-point attempts. He was playing more aggressive. He was playing more within his game by taking a lot more threes, a lot more shots at the rim, cutting out and trimming down the fat in between that area. And his shot chart over the last 56 games looked much more attractive because of it and it translated to him playing excellent basketball. That was capped off by a 51-point game at one point against the Orlando Magic. Sadiq Bey, 51 points. Like, who saw that coming? Nobody. I don't care how big of a Sadiq Bay fan you were. The dude had 51 points against the Orlando Magic. He was the youngest player to ever get a 50 point game in the Pistons history. It's it's it was so his his turnaround over the last 56 games was so remarkable that we had people trying to say that he's the greatest three point shooter of all time in Pistons history. Now I disagree with that. I, I we had an episode on here where I talked about why I disagree with that. I think Chauncey is still much better shooter. But either way, that's not the the point. Is is that you wouldn't after the first twenty six games? If I just locked you in a chamber right there after the first twenty six games, I said, "Listen, I'm gonna keep you right here, and I'm gonna come back in five months and be like, hey, that dude you watched over the first twenty six games, he's gonna be talked about as possibly the greatest three point shooter in Pistons history, and he's gonna be a key part of the Pistons' future." You would have looked at me and said, "What the hell are you watching? Are you watching the same dude?" Like that kind of flip. Sadiq Bay deserves a ton of credit for looking at himself in the mirror. Trimming that fat out of his game, playing smarter, playing more decisive, playing stronger, and playing aggressive. And it led to him playing excellent basketball and securing himself a spot as one of the core, core pieces. Not just a, a guy off the bench, a core piece of the Detroit Pistons' future. Now, who knows what the future holds? Maybe he gets traded down the line for like a bigger piece. Maybe he gets traded for like a superstar or an all-star. Maybe something like that happens. But either way, he secured himself as one of the main pieces of this Pistons core, and that's something I don't think anybody would have been thinking after the first 26 games at all. Not at all. So he deserves a ton of credit for that. Sadiq Bey played absolutely absurd after the first 26 games, and I'm giving it up to him. I've never been happier to be wrong about a player. When we come back, we'll talk about another development from Sadiq Bey's season that I want to shout out to him, and then we'll wrap it up 
with the story of Sadiq Bey's second season. So stay tuned for that. But first, I have to tell you guys about another one of our sponsors, Built Bar. This is the time of year that I've pretty much given up on all my New Year's resolutions, but not this year. I'm sticking to my resolution to eat right, and it's thanks to Built Bar. It almost feels like it's not even really a resolution because I actually enjoy eating them. Have you tried the Puffs Bar? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting protein bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar, they're an absolute treat. And guess what? They're covered in 100% real chocolate. But it's not just Puff Bars, it's all Built Bars that are covered in 100% real chocolate. Built Bars are low in calorie and high in protein. Replace your candy bars with these. They taste better and they're simply better for you. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from 200 to 300 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Go to Built.com and scroll down to the macros chart. You'll be absolutely blown away. High protein, low calories. High fiber, low carbs. And while being good for you and being low on uh, low on carbs and high in fiber, they make it taste absolutely delicious because of all the flavors. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, new flavor, white chocolate, cookies and cream. You guys know my favorite is the peanut butter flavor. It got cherry barcia, raspberry, strawberry, blueberry, all kinds of flavors that you can go over to Built.com and check out. And if you're constantly looking at Built.com, you will see new limited time flavors for what feels like every other week. At Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. And I don't know how, but they pull it off every single time. So go to Built.com and use promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Again, that's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar ever. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate Best way to support the podcast, yada, yada. You guys get all that. But really, the story of Sadiq Bay this second season was was amazing. I I was um, I, I love to be a part of it. And we talked about how he trimmed the fat out of his game. He started being more aggressive going to the basket. He eliminated the long twos mostly. He eliminated the inefficient shots. And he was either taking threes most of the time or he was taking the layup or getting to the free throw line. Now, yes, he, he mixed in the occasional fade away from the post up or occasional mid-range jump shot coming off a curl or down or a pin down or something like that. But mostly everything was coming from beyond the arc or at the rim or at the free throw line. That real that right there is the best way and the most efficient way to play basketball in the NBA. It's the most efficient way really to just play basketball, period. But especially in this NBA, in this era of basketball, if you're going to have the ball in your hands a lot, that, that's those are the three key places you need to live at. And he did a great job of that. However, there's something else that he did really well too, though. And I feel like I, – I can't help but feel like that the – the introduction of John Beeline and his teammate Isaiah Livers helped him with this. If you listen to the podcast or watched it on YouTube, whichever one, over the final like month or so of the season when Isaiah Livers was a part of the rotation, you guys will know this podcast became a big fan of Isaiah Livers. And I feel like a lot of the fan bases did as well. Everyone loves it, Isaiah Livers now and are, are wondering where he's at in this in this you know rebuild and restore or whatever going into next year. Um, but one of the best things about Isaiah Livers. That people, everyone, that everyone loved, especially me. Something I love the most about him isn't just his three point shooting, even though that's obviously probably his best trait. The fact he can space the floor out and hit a lot of threes, at, you know, a really good percentage. But one of the best things about him was he plays team basketball. And he knows how to play the right way, and you know, it's small things like this that you know not a lot of people care about, and it doesn't pop up in the box score. So not a lot of people look at it and really care. The casuals don't care. But if you're building a basketball team, you need these guys. And what Isaiah Livers did really well, he played team basketball, which entails making the right pass when you're supposed to make it timely. A lot of times, Isaiah Livers get the ball, someone's open next to him in the corner, he makes that quick pass. He sees a guy open, uh, he makes the right rotations. You guys remember we talked about his rotations around the three-point line on offense. That helps a lot. He just knows where to be. He knows when to make the right pass. He'll make it timely instead of waiting, trying to size up his opponent or try to do something he can't do and then pass it. And now the defense is there. He makes the right passes consistently and makes the right reads consistently. He doesn't make mistakes. He plays the right way of basketball, and he doesn't. he's not trying to do nothing he can't do. And I feel like a little bit rubbed off on Sadiq Bey. Because if you remember, not all this other stuff that I, I, I criticized Sadiq Bey for before the season, I was worried about coming into the season. But yes, he proved me wrong. I, I, I've never been happier to be proved wrong about something like that. I'm happier than ever. But one of the things I talked about before the season, remember, I said in the first segment, was his processing and his ability to read a defense. Something that he struggled with earlier on, and he, he 
overall playmaking, he got better at. I, mean, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but I'll give him some credit there. He overall playmaking, he got better at. One more, you know, paying attention to is the fact as the season went on, he got better and better and better at processing and making the right basketball play and not just the best play for himself, the right team play. I have to believe that John Beeline rubbed some of that off on him and Isaiah Livers rubbed some of that off on him. A lot of times earlier in the year and last year, guys would be open next to Sadiq Bay and he tries to do something first and then waits and then he gets the guy, guy the ball and then by then the defense is recovered. He drives to the rim, the easy jump off is there. Instead of making that pass, he's taking a contested layup because he wants to try to score instead of make the right team play. A lot of, you know, just, just he, a mismatch happens with someone else. Instead of trying to notice that mismatch and get him the ball, he tries to do something himself. A lot, just a lot of processing and quick things that you need to react to before a defense can change and, and adjust to. Sadiq Bay struggled with, but as the season went on, he not only did he get better at trimming those other parts, obviously getting long twos, all that stuff we talked about. He got absolutely better at processing defenses and making the right play and playing team basketball. And I don't know what it was. A lot, I, I honestly, I've attributed it to Isaiah Livers and a lot of those, you know, John Beeline. But really, John or, or Isaiah Liver is having a key part of the rotation. At that point in the season, Jeremy Grant wasn't playing. Sadiq Bay was, obviously. Isaiah Livers was playing. Killian Hayes was playing a little bit more. He was playing much better. I feel like that group and just the young guys in general, at around like the after the All-Star break, and I, I'm, I'm not going to lie, specifically when even Jeremy was out, I think it, it went up even more. They started to love to play with each other. I think that was started to happen. They started to trust each other. They wanted to play for each other. And – you know, not everyone has to buy into that, but Sadiq Bay 100% bought into that, and he got better at processing defenses and making the right decision. The whole team did, but Sadiq Bay did as well, and that was one of the things I slammed him for basically in the offseason and questioned whether he could actually develop that kind of thing. I thought a lot of that is just like stuff you're born with. Like a lot of this basketball instincts and IQ kind of thing, I feel like most of the time you either have that or you don't. There's a few exceptions, but a lot of times guys are just born with great instincts. You don't develop instincts a lot of times. However, Sadiq Bey has gotten better at that, and I want to attribute that to, obviously, Sadiq Bey himself, his teammates, Isaiah Livers, John Beeline, even Dwayne Casey. The culture that they set and the way they had these guys playing hard for each other throughout the majority of the season and through Sadiq Bey's first 26 games, no, I don't feel like anyone was playing for each other. Sadiq Bey wasn't playing for others. Jeremy wasn't playing for others. Everyone wasn't playing for each other. Everyone was playing for themselves. And then after that, I think the best way to wrap up Sadiq Bey's story was not only did everyone start to trim the fat out their games, they started to play for each other. Sadiq Bey, Sadiq Bey started to play for each, for his teammates. His teammates started to play for Sadiq Bey. They started to have immense respect for him and started to look to him as one of their leaders. And he answered the call. He played extremely well over the last 56 games. He flipped his season around, trial and error over the first 26 games, didn't keep banging his head against the wall, instead walked around it, opened the door and just walked through it. Actually, I don't even want to say walk through it. He ran through the door and played exceptionally well for the last 56 games of the season. And by doing that, Sadiq Bey proved that he is the first pick from Troy Weaver's original draft class as the Detroit Pistons GM that has shown that he's going to be a legit piece of the Pistons' future, a legit piece of their core moving forward. And I've never been more happy to say I was wrong about Sadiq Bey. Sadiq Bey is excellent. And I'm happy that he's on the Detroit Pistons. And his progression and his development this season was an absolute treat and an absolute joy to watch. I'm I'm happy for Sadiq Bey. I wanted to give him props for his review. Didn't want to just go strengths and weaknesses. I just wanted to tell the story of his season because I feel like his story really was this one of the best, one of the best storylines of the year. A lot of credit to Sadiq Bey. I was wrong. I'm happy to be wrong. And Sadiq Bey is legit. He's going to be around for a while for the Detroit Pistons. He's going to be around a long time in the NBA because he's a guy who wants to get better. He looks at how to get better, and he's not stubborn. He's shown that throughout the season. Credit to Deep Bay. His turnaround was, was crazy, man. So there's your review of Sadiq Bay's season, the story of Sadiq Bay's sophomore season. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below if you guys feel like I missed anything possibly within his story of the season how you guys felt about his second season, let me know in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, make sure you're making Lockdown NBA your second listen of every single day. From the first jump ball of the play-in tournament to the last possession of the finals, 
Locked on experts take you deep inside the playoffs with inside analysis affecting all 30 NBA teams. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Sadiq Bay, incredible story in his second season with the Detroit Pistons. Until the next episode, I'll see you guys later. Peace out, everybody. I was wrong about Sadiq Bay. Okay. I know you guys want to hear me keep saying it. You guys, you guys want to hear me say it. I'm going to keep saying it. I was wrong about Sadiq Bay. I'll see you guys later, everyone. Stay safe and peace out.